Greetings all. Today we're going to talk about elements, molecules, and compounds. Let's check it out. I have a little accompaniment. All right. So first of all, an element is a pure substance made of only one kind of matter. We track these guys on the periodic table which lists all the known elements. The word known is important here because it was only in November 2016 that we got the last row filled in. Um, 111 through 118 are now verified, but you listen to some early Bill Nye videos and they talk about the 93 elements that were known about back in the 1990s. So it's always growing. Known elements are, can change. So an element is, as we said, a pure substance made of only one kind of matter. A molecule is a particle of matter in which two, count them, two or more atoms are joined tightly together. Now the way they're joined, there's a few different ways. We don't really go into that in sixth grade, but there are different types of bonds that hold molecules together. A molecule can be made of the same element or it can be made of different elements. So here is an abundant molecule that we see a lot of on Earth. No, it's not the Mickey Mouse molecule. It is dun, 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 H2O. H2O. See two hydrogens, one oxygen. Yep, water, of course. Uh -huh. Water. Now a compound is a substance whose molecules contain matter from two or more elements. Count them. Two or more elements. That's a compound. As opposed to a molecule that has two or more atoms. Okay? Compound has two or more elements that are different. Okay? So here we have chlorine, sodium, all right, Na is sodium. Sodium, chlorine, sodium, chlorine. What do you think that makes? It, let's see, come on. sodium, chlorine. Any ideas? Any, any guesses? Yeah, salt. That's sodium chloride, better known as table salt. Sodium chloride. All right. Now, a property. Let's talk about physical properties, okay? A physical property is something that can be observed, measured, or changed without changing the substance itself. So a property is like a characteristic, something we can use to describe something. All right. Um, um, I am a human male. I'm 6'5". Um, those are properties of who I am. All right. So when we talk about physical properties, we're going to use those to describe the substance. So a physical property, you can observe, you can measure. It doesn't change the substance itself. Examples would be odor, smell, sense, um, color, which is sensed with you know, your sight, your vision, mass, which we would measure with a triple beam balance in grams, Volume, which we would measure with a graduated cylinder or a beaker. Density, which is only calculated by having mass and volume. Okay, You calculate density with the formula mass divided by volume. So mass, how much stuff there is, divided by volume, how much space it takes up, that's density. And then texture is something we can sense with our sense of touch or sense of feel. All right. Now, chemical properties. A chemical property is a property that can only be observed and measured by performing a chemical change or a chemical reaction. So the structure has to be altered or changed for the chemical property to become apparent. So if we take Chlorine, remember chlorine from a few slides back. Chlorine's a poisonous gas, all right? If we combine chlorine 
poisonous gas, and sodium, which is an explosive powder. All right, poisonous gas, explosive powder. We get what? We get table salt. So what's happening is there's a chemical change that happens when these two guys combine chemically. It changes the nature. It changes the properties of these two separate items, and they become something else completely. Some examples of chemical properties are reactivity, how much it reacts with other elements. If you look at the periodic table, the elements that are in column one or group one are the most reactive. They include hydrogen and everything in that left column, that group one. Highly reactive. Now the least reactive elements are the ones over on column um, the far right column. The, they're better known as the noble gases. Helium, uh, neon, argon, those guys are not likely to react at all. They have very, very low reactivity. Another example of a chemical property, toxicity. How toxic is it to organisms, living things? How flammable is it? How easily will it burn? How much heat will it produce? Flammability and heat are different things. Oxidation states, whoa, yes. How many electrons have been moved to get the chemical to its current state or condition? Oxidation state states, that has a lot to do with what's going on in batteries. Oxidation states. Chemical stability. How stable or resistant is it to change? And what types of chemical bonds are there? There's lots of different ways that atoms can be bonded together into molecules. These are the chemical properties. These are not physical properties. Okay, folks, we're at the end of the road with these notes. So now make sure you've filled in all the blanks, answered all the questions, and last but not least, of course, summarize each page with at least three sentences detailing these notes. Show them to your teacher before you proceed to the last worksheet in this chemistry packet. Good luck all and have a great day. Bye.